three, two, one. Hey, I'm Josh Golgerly, Product Manager for Case Aftermarket Solutions. And I'm Ted Polzer, Case Construction Director of Product and Customer Support for North America. Thank you for joining us today on another edition of Case Live. We're here today to talk to you about preparing your equipment for cold weather operation, or if your business shuts down during winter months, storing that equipment in a safe and responsible manner. As always, we've got a Q&A box at the bottom of the screen. Drop your questions in there throughout the day, and we'll be taking care of those questions here in just a few minutes. So why is this a thing? Why are we having this event? Well, we saw our first snowflakes here in Wisconsin this weekend, and we know snow is falling elsewhere throughout the country. Temps are dropping, and cold weather provides an additional level of complexity to your fleet management. Fluids, batteries, components, and the effect of cold weather on all this different than during the summer months. So. That's what we're going to be talking about here today. That's right, Ted. And it's worth throwing out there before we dive in, every machine is different based on when it was built, the size, the type of engine, and the environment it's operating in. We're gonna talk about these things at a very high level today, but it's worth taking time to chat with your local equipment dealer and their service department to review the best practices for winter and spend time in that owner's manual as well, uh, which will help guide you in many of the decisions that you need to make for your machine. With that said, let's dive into a few of the truths about operating in winter. The days are shorter, the temperatures are colder. So if you're planning on, on buying a machine to operate throughout the winter months, here are some considerations that you may want to make right away at the time of purchase. Many machines have some package or option that provides added features or cold weather operation. Whether standard or optional, Look for things like engine block heaters, heavy duty batteries, grid heaters, fuel filter and water separator heaters, def blankets and heaters, rear defrosters and more. These features incorporated at the time of purchase are going to make the transition to cold weather operation easier for you. Some of the things that you should be considering are potential different changes within the tires that you plan to use or possibly the tracks that you plan to use. And one of those considerations, and we'll just use a, a tire here as an example, very standard tire that's out there that you may have seen on many skid steers. While this is a great tire for universal use within dirt, when it comes to wintertime operations, such as hard ice, things like that, this tire may not actually provide the best traction for you. And so considerations need to be made around some of the other tire pattern selections that are out there. You're looking for tires that have siping, so small cuts in the tires. Sometimes you see them as like little Z's cut in the tires. You're looking for multiple sharp edges of the tread pattern. In addition to the compound of the tire makes a big, big difference for added grip when you need it. So depending on how much snow you plan to push, if this is your core business and this is the direction that you wanna be as most efficient as you can be, consider looking at other types of tires possibly for winter operation and then switching back to a general tire for your normal dirt operation once that resumes. Another general best practice here is to have your equipment outfitted with as much lighting as possible. Each machine has different lighting packages available from the factory, but as the days get shorter, having the ability to see more of the work area around you at all times is very important, especially in snow removal applications in busy commercial lots, where it's just as important for others to be able to see you as it is for you to be able to see them. And if we're really focused on operator comfort here, you're obviously gonna to wanna to make sure that your cab has the full range of environmental controls. Options like heated seats help too. Take some time before the season starts to check the cab seals, look for cracks in the mirrors, etc. Check and blow out the cab air filter as an example. Make sure that the cab is solid and these systems are operational before you get that really cold first streak. Even simple things like making sure that the windshield wipers are in proper working order is important. Dealer service departments get really busy this time of year and getting that equipment in sooner than later where it's gonna help ensure that you've got a nice and warm, comfortable cab in a strong performing machine. 
Now, we're gonna transition here and we're gonna talk a little bit about proper setup procedures, but before we do that, I think it's important that we talk about batteries and the electrical system, specifically without which startup in cold temperature is not possible. So we're gonna to move to Josh here in just a second to cover some of that battery stuff, but I think for those of you that may be new to snow, be ready for batteries. Batteries are always the thing that, that tends to plague everybody. It's always the worst timing when a battery lets you down. You could have operators that intention or unintentionally leave the key switch on, things like that. So be prepared. Make sure that you've got good, fresh batteries available. And with that, I think Josh is going to kind of dive into some of the batteries. Thanks, Ted. There's a few things we want to talk about as you prepare your equipment for winter. One of the things to make sure is that you have a fully charged battery heading into season. An undercharged battery may start fine when it's warm, but current demand increases and cold cranking amp of capacity decreases as temperatures get colder, leading to starting issues. And when you do get uh, the machine started, you want to let it run for a bit to allow that battery to fully recharge. That length of time needed to run your machine will vary based on the battery's remaining charge. If needed, remove the battery and charge it with a benchtop charger for a longer period of time. Also keep in mind, frequent starts and stops will drain the battery's charge and could leave you out of luck. Keeping that battery fully charged isn't just important from a starting perspective. Drops in voltage and operating at low voltages can cause fault codes to pop and the computer may even shut down. If possible, if there's going to be time in between use, you can also attach a battery maintainer to your battery uh, when it's not in use. This will ensure that you have a full charge to start the day when you need that machine. You also want to make sure that battery electrolytes are up at the full indicator line and over the top of the plates. Plates that have been dried will not perform as intended. Only use distilled water when topping off your battery. The acid level should be just barely on top of the plates. Overfilling your battery can cause it to leak under a load. Also make sure you're cleaning any dirt and debris from the top of the battery. Those materials can actually create a conductive path and slowly drain the battery. If there are any corrosion around the terminals, clean them using a terminal cleaner and a terminal, and a terminal brush. The main point here is to ensure that the terminal posts and the cables have a clean and secure contact to provide the best and most consistent current supply from the batteries to the machine. Then there's other aspects of the electrical system that you'll want to check as well. You'll want to make sure that your alternator is working at 100% efficiency. And if it's a belt-driven alternator, you'll want to make sure that the belt is in proper working order. Giving this attention to the battery and the electrical system will help ensure consistent and starting and uptime throughout the winter. And it's worth noting that we always recommend using heavy-duty OEM batteries like the MagnaPower battery that you see here. These are designed to work with and withstand the heavy vibrations and rough environments that construction equipment works in. And that's only going to help ensure that you are entering the cold weather with a healthy battery. Thanks, Josh. So once you've got the machine started, you'll want to let it warm up properly before you start operating. And that doesn't just mean to start the machine and literally let it warm up. While yes, all of the fluids and everything that are near the engine will warm up that way, it's also more important to cycle the fluids through the system, allowing them to fully warm up. Hoses and connection points get stiff during cold weather, and cold oil is thicker oil. That's how you blow hoses, turning a machine on and trying to operate it at full speed right away, pushing thicker, cooler oil through a network of hoses that are also cold and stiff. That's when bad things happen. So when you start the machine, absolutely let it warm up for a few minutes but then start cycling the machine through its moves. You'll slowly move the boom up and down a few cycles, then start curling the bucket up and then down, up and down slowly. This allows the warm hydraulic oil to circulate throughout the system and fully warm up the entire system. The same action should be taken with hydraulic attachments. The hydraulic oil that sits in those hoses on attachments is more exposed to cold temperatures than in other places, and it's just sitting out there in the lines. So you wanna take care to slowly cycle those hydraulic attachments and get the oil flowing properly and fully warming up the system. Another consideration that needs to be made is also your idle times. Naturally, it's winter. Operators wanna stay warm. You wanna keep the glass melted off, things like that. But also remember that our fuel costs are much higher. And so that is going to increase your O&O costs. But more importantly, when you take a look at any of these late model 
tier four emissions engines, it's important that the engines aren't just constantly idling. They need load, they need some engine speed to make, maintain a warm temperature to get those systems to function properly. This is, is something that you really need to consider if you want to maximize your uptime. Uh, that way you can just go to work and you can make sure that you're just pounding on hours on your machine reliably. Okay, Josh, let's talk a little bit about some fluid and filter specifics. If it's all right with you, maybe what I'll do is kind of rapid fire through a few different topics towards you and then you can kind of cover that information. Sounds good. Okay, so let's start with engine oil. The easy answer is to always follow what the operator's manual says, but there are a few truths uh, that we can talk about here today. Synthetic oils are always gonna work better in colder applications as they typically flow more freely in colder temperatures. Every oil has a viscosity rating. The first number preceding the W is the viscosity at zero degrees. So the lower the number, the less it will thicken in colder weather. The second number is the oil's viscosity at 100 degrees Fahrenheit. And this represents its resistance to thinning out at high temperatures. So as an example, you're going to be better off putting a 0W40 in colder temperatures instead of a 1540. This is important because thicker oil is going to be harder to start. Just as with hydraulic oil, you try to push thickened oil through the filter and you're going to blow O-rings. Josh, that's great information. Maybe tell us a little bit about hydraulic oil. Sure. If you look at our Hytran Premium Hydraulic Oil, that's going to work well in most environments that you're going to see here in the lower 48. That will typically work without any problems from negative 30 degrees Celsius up to 50 degrees Celsius, or around negative 22 up to over 100 degrees Fahrenheit. It's a fairly all-season hydraulic oil, but if you're working in an extreme northern environment where temperatures can drop below negative, degree, negative 30 degrees Celsius, there's a, high, there's a synthetic Hytran premium that we would recommend that will work down to negative 40 degrees Celsius. And that's good news because this hydraulic oil is an all season hydraulic oil, so it'll work well in the summer as well. Interesting. What about engine coolant? Coolant integrity is just as important in cold weather as it is in warm weather. It helps prevent corrosion, it lubricates the shaft seals, it inhibits cavitation. So, you've got to make sure that your coolant is filled to the top and that there's a proper pressure relief. You, you've still got to flush and replace the coolant at OEM specified intervals. And you have to make sure whether it's a traditional coolant or an oat coolant, because you can never mix the two. Okay, Josh, that's good information. What about fuel? What can I do with that to prevent any future opportunities? Equipment fleets cycle through diesel fuel pretty quickly. So generally you're gonna get either the winter mix or the summer blend based on your diesel provider. However, there are still elements of the fuel system that you will want to keep an eye on. You'll want to clean the fuel tank and cap and the vent to make sure that they are functioning properly and to watch out for sediment and water in the fuel. These are major causes of fuel injection system failures and cold weather can accentuate these problems associated with water and contaminants in the fuel. So it's important that you keep an eye on this. When you fill up, make sure you are wiping the snow away from the fill point. Make it a habit of draining the water from the fuel pre-filter and any action you can take to minimize water and contaminants in your fuel will be very important. Yeah, it definitely is. That's a long day of cleanup, right? Once you get one that's had that in there. What about DEF? What are some of the practices with diesel exhaust fluid that I should be aware of? Well, DEF can actually freeze but between the warming process and the systems built into the equipment to keep the DEF warm, generally frozen DEF is not a problem. The act of freezing does not affect its performance or its purity, and once thawed, it will work perfectly. Interesting, Josh. What, uh, what should I be aware of? I mean, should I be concerned about the type of grease or anything like that that I, I utilize you know, differently from the summer versus winter? Yeah, grease is important in all seasons, but it's even more important in cold weather because it helps keep out moisture and contaminants. That moisture can freeze and it can create pressure stresses throughout the, the machine and encourages corrosion. A properly greased machine can help prevent that. Okay, so let's talk a little bit about a few other opportunities on your machines that you need to be aware of, one being filters. We've covered a little bit about cleaning out your cab air filter, which is kind of a common one that gets overlooked. But the other ones are obviously your normal maintenance. You have your hydraulic filters. You also have your, your fuel filters. You know, things like that. And, and as Josh was kind of filling us in, those filters have to move the same quantity of oil, right, 
at a colder temperature where that oil doesn't want to move. And so if you have a you know, 90% plugged filter, the back pressure associated to that is going to be very high and it's going to inhibit some of the operational performance of the machine. So again, it's a very good idea. Focus on those filters. Take a look at the last time they were changed. Uh, it's always a good practice to make sure that you've got fresh filters with that capability to trap anything that's out there. If you're running attachments and switching around a lot, it's also a good consideration to keep an eye on filters too, because if there's one machine in the fleet that has had contamination, uh, maybe a bunch of ice or snow on the, on the hose connections, these are all things that can lead up to a prematurely plugged filter. The other considerations that you need to have are on tires. Okay, we talked a little bit about earlier about traction and, and some of the tread patterns. But the other thing that you want to pay attention to on tires is, you know, go around, take a look for any obvious splits, cracks, or cuts in the tires. Maybe these were ones where you've already had a patch done, meant to get to it. In the snow, believe it or not, you would think it would be a, a very, you know, minimal, um, uh, you know, it's not as an aggressive application. It, it can be. So one of the things that I always like to do as well is I like to make sure that all my air pressures are equal. Um, and that way I can maintain, you know, a good ride quality that I want for the machine. If I'm working on hard surfaces and parking lots, pushing snow. Um, the other thing is, is that, you know, the lower I go on my air pressure, the wider that the footprint gets, I can actually get a little better traction. So it's a way that if you don't maybe have the most ideal tire that's out there, you can drop some air pressure a little bit. Sometimes that makes a big difference. That kind of leads us into talking a little bit about tracks, right? So on that, we're gonna use this mini excavator over here as an example, even though it's not something you're typically gonna see a lot of hours on in the winter, we just wanna use the tracks or maybe you're uh, running a CTL. Couple of things to consider with tracks. While you get a great amount of additional traction associated with the tracks, it's again important to take a look at the overall condition, cracks, cuts, anything like that. Track tension has a lot to do with this as well. And it may be something that you don't see in the summer that can become a real problem in winter is packing. So with the tracks, as you've got them adjusted, you've been operating them, if you start to get a lot of debris that starts to fill up in and around idlers, drive sprockets, rollers, these are great areas that you wanna keep, keep an attention point to because we wanna make sure that those rollers are rolling. We wanna make sure that we don't have like a big ice chunk that's froze up in the front of the undercarriage here and that's grooving or cutting that track, right? That's gonna just cut down on the life expectancy of that track that you're gonna get. The other thing to consider, again, we talked a little bit about this before, is tread pattern. And this is a very, very typical tread pattern on a mini excavator or even a CTO for that matter. But another consideration, if you're gonna be running that machine very, very hard, we also offer different types of tread patterns for tracks that have more siping, uh, more blocks and edges that will give you that little additional bite that you might need to get the performance that you expect out of that machine. Another consideration that you need to think about is your operational practices as well. Even in, your, in the, the dirt environment in summer, as an example, somebody that's always counter rotating or always turns one direction is gonna create a, a different type of a wear pattern with that machine versus an operator that is cognizant about making different directional turns, doesn't always run in reverse, you know, things like this. So it's important to consider some of those effects, even with snow. And you'd think, hey, it's slippery conditions, right? How much wear do you have? Believe it or not, there is still a substantial amount of wear that can occur even during that snow operation. And so it is important, focus, you know, maybe if it's yourself as an owner operator or some of your operators, Keep an eye out there and try to make sure that they're utilizing multiple different types of movements and that will really help prolong the life of your tires, your, your tracks, uh, as well as other attachments. This is where I'll also tell you that your local case dealer is your best friend during cold weather months. Whether under the protection of a standard machine warranty or if it's under ProCare on our heavy equipment or with any of the extended protection packages available on newer used equipment from your case dealer, they're ready to be prepared to do an inspection, get your machine ready for the extreme cold, and be there to support you when something does go wrong. Which brings me to telematics. Case Sightwatch telematics comes standard on heavy equipment, backhoes, and on the new TV620B, and is optional throughout the rest of the product line. Telematics is going to allow you and the local dealer, if you give them access, to monitor machine performance remotely to ensure optimal operation and performance. So we've covered a lot of information related around the do's and don'ts of operating in the snow. But if maybe you're a customer, what if you're not gonna operate this machine in the snow, right? 
Compact excavator is a great example. Probably something for the really far northern reaches that's not going to be utilized a lot. We need to probably start thinking a little bit and talking a little bit about how do we store these types of machines. Well, you can just store it in a cold, dark shed somewhere, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> well, that, that, that happens, right? Um, and it all depends on how easy you want your spring to be, right? If you want to be able to plop the key in a machine, fire it up, and go to work in the spring if you are going to mothball a machine, I, I would definitely recommend taking the time to go through and we've actually kind of talked about this in some of our other videos that we've done, but runs you through a lot of these same areas. There's great information that's in your, your operator's manual as well about machines that are sitting. Uh, there needs to be special awareness given to DEF as an example, which is a, you know, a fluid that can expire. Um, and also it's always nice to make sure that the machine is probably well maintained in a sense of fresh oil, things like that before it is stored for the winter. The obvious best case scenario would be to store that machine in, in a climate controlled garage. We know that's not always possible, so parking it out somewhere out of the elements and protected from the wind, moisture, and cold air as much as possible is important. One of the first things you should do at the end of your season is to schedule a full machine inspection with your local case dealer. They'll not only get your PMs to where they need to be, but they'll also identify any issues that need to be addressed before the thaw and make sure that those repairs are made before the busy season starts up and they get backed up with other work. Get on their schedule now. It's important and a great time to do a thorough fluid test on the machine to identify any possible issues within the machine that may require attention in the future. That's right, Ted. And as far as batteries go, you've got to make sure you give them some love as well. Long story short, Unattended batteries throughout the cold weather will deteriorate and they will be prone to freezing. This can cause internal battery failures to the plates and can lead to decreased performance or even total battery failure. Having a battery hooked up to the maintainer throughout the winter to keep it on in a full state of charge. If you are not able to keep a maintainer on your battery, we, we recommend that you test your battery periodically and recharge it with a portable charger if needed. This will ultimately extend your battery's life and help prevent freezing. Another thing to consider as well is periodically starting up your machine throughout the storage season. It's important because every time you start up that machine and you, and you let it go through a warm-up cycle, you want to function with the loader uh, and the bucket as well. That puts a, a fresh, thin coat of oil over all the cylinder rods, things like that. Lubricates the engine, right? As soon as we start flowing that oil around and everything is draining down through the engine, it's a great practice to coat everything. It's going to help keep any corrosion minimized. Uh, it'll also help keep fresh fuel moving through the system. So it's extremely important that you, you know, try to take some time to figure out maybe a cadence or a schedule to follow and that's really going to help you up in the I hope you out in the springtime when you go to start the machine. So the other thing as well that you need to make sure that you're considering uh, especially for during that winter cold operation um, even additionally when you think about bringing your machines out of storage is what types of parts and materials and other opportunities are you going to have to have support from your dealer from? And so with that, I think it's important, let's talk to Josh a little bit about that. And maybe he can kind of give us a play-by-play a -play of how we should plan our season. This is a particularly important question this, this year, Ted. Like everything else uh, today, lead times and availability are very challenging across some areas. Now it is more important than ever to stock up on fluids and filters and critical parts ahead of time. You need to make sure that they're available at the time you need them. So stocking up now will, will allow you to have them in the moment you need them. In cold weather, it is more important than ever to trust in OEM specified approved fluids and filters. Freezing temperatures and harsh conditions are not the time to roll the dice with third party solutions. You can always trust that OEM approved products from your local case dealer are designed and meant to work with your machine. We've also made everything available online now for you to purchase through your local dealer. Bill's going to drop a link to that e-commerce site in the chat box now, which links you directly to that site. And also, as you have either planned maintenance work that needs to be done, or you have something that needs to be replaced, keep in mind of our Reman product line. Remanufactured parts, like those offered from your local case dealership, are built to meet or exceed original OEM specification and are backed by a best-in-class warranty that in some cases is even better than new warranty coverage. And with that, Bill, what do you have for us? 
Well, good morning, people, and uh, thank you so much for uh, joining us here this morning. Saw a lot of familiar names on the uh, on the list this morning. Josh, thank you. Your first case live. Uh, appreciate you spending time with us this morning. Ted, you've done a couple of these. As always, I am super impressed with the vestige, and uh, we'll talk more about that in just a minute. Before we do, uh, a, a couple of housekeeping items. One, as always, uh, drop your, Q and, uh, your questions down in the Q&A box here at the bottom of the screen. We will uh, take them here throughout the morning. Uh, we'll go for about 10 or 15 minutes or so. And then anything that we don't answer, uh, we'll follow up with you after the show. Uh, one point of interest right now, especially as we're getting into cold weather snow season, uh, there is a special deal right now. Uh, I'm going to drop that link into the chat box as well. Uh, right now from your local case dealer, you can get a $500 instant rebate or six months special financing on an Arctic sectional snow pusher. You saw a lot of Arctic pushers uh, in the video there uh, as we went through the presentation this morning. Uh, great partner of ours. Check that out and uh, uh, be ready here for the snow as it starts to fall. Another thing, all jokes aside, we talk about supply chain. We talk about uh, all of those elements. I talk about Ted's vest. Um, it's about to be holiday shopping season. And uh, Ann, uh, who, who many of you may or may not know, does a great job with case merch. And I'm sure there is someone in your home or amongst your colleagues or friends that uh, would love a good case hat, good case shirt, good case jacket. Uh, I'm dropping a link here now into the case gear store uh, where you can get all of your case gear uh, gifts, uh, collectibles, things of that nature for the holiday season. Uh, go take a look. Ann puts together a, a great selection of materials there and uh, uh, get an early start on your holiday shopping, as they say. So with that, we're gonna jump into the reason we're all here today. Uh, we've got some questions starting to come in. Uh, please, uh, again, feel free to drop them in the Q&A box throughout the morning. This first one that I'm gonna throw out, uh, I'm gonna throw out at you, Josh. Uh, you talked about switching to a synthetic in winter. Uh, are there benefits to uh, having that synthetic year round? Yes, synthetic oils are always a great option no matter what time of year. The engineered additives added to the synthetic oils will uh, lubricate your system better than a traditional mineral oil. So no matter what time of year you're operating in, synthetic oils are a great solution uh, for your machine. Uh, Ted, you were talking about telematics. Um, what, what can telematics tell me about how my machine's operating in cold weather? That's a, an interesting question, and telematics can be very helpful in multiple things. I mean, not just cold weather, but cold weather specifically generates some other challenges. If you have a large fleet, you might be staging that fleet at different locations that you have contracts with. And as you probably already know, it can be challenging to understand, did those machines get fuel? Are they full on def? Are they prepared? Um, is there a low battery voltage alarm or anything like that that you can you know, quickly take a look at um, prior to that next big wave or band of snow coming in and know that you're prepared and have some peace of mind with it? Thank you, Ted. Uh, next question coming in. Um, Josh, you talked, about, uh, you talked about battery maintainers. What battery maintainers do we recommend? A basic battery maintainer is a very simple solution uh, if you have power near your unit. These are almost always automatic, and so they're computer operated, so you do not have to worry about if you're going to overcharge or undercharge your battery. And you can keep them on the entire length of time that it's being stored. If you do not have any power near where you're storing your equipment and it's stored outdoors, a solar charger could be a good option if you need uh, to have your, your battery charging uh, throughout the storage period. Just make sure that when you move that equipment that you secure that solar panel and that it's not still up top. Uh, another question here on batteries, popular topic with the cold weather coming in. Uh, can battery cable conditions affect how a machine starts? Yes, absolutely. If you know you have a fresh battery in your unit, but you are still having trouble starting that machine and it seems like an electrical problem, make sure you check your cables. Cables can bend and it can cause uh, inconsistent um, current throughout your machine. So work with your local dealer. They can either provide you the original cable or they may have the option to make you one. Uh, another good question here. Um, I have a machine that struggles to start. What are some of the uh, troubleshooting things that I can do uh, right off the bat? Yeah, I'll take that one. 
So a couple considerations. I mean, clearly we've talked about batteries and cables, right? So we're through those points, but they're great starting points. The, the other things that you need to cut tight technically start to consider, uh, and this information is going to be available in your ops manual, is what type of starting aid is the machine equipped with? Is it glow plugs? Is it a grid heater? And it's important to understand how that mechanism works because when you key on, uh, sometimes we've seen this where operators aren't letting the grid heater time down fully. That means heat up the grid heater fully uh, before they crank, right? We want to draw in hot air um, to, to assist in the starting of that engine. So those are always kind of the, the, the fundamental steps that we recommend is make sure that you're following that process, give the machine um, that capability of, of warming everything up so that you have a better chance at reliably starting. Excellent, thank you, Ted. Um, question here as it relates to, we talked about telematics a little bit, a question here related a little bit to data. Um, I have a connected machine. Does my dealer see what I see or do they have expanded capabilities? Yeah, Josh, you're gonna have to fight me for that one. I like these <laughs> questions. So with that being said, you know, when you provide access to your local case dealer to be able to see your machine, a couple of different things. They can see the data that you see as well, but on certain machines that are in our product lineup as well, there's an expansive range of additional capabilities that your dealer has. One of those being for like the G series wheel loader or the TV620B is that they have remote support capabilities. So they can go in there, take a deeper dive into what's going on in the machine. They may be able to push software over the air to that unit, um, things along that, not, that nature. So yes, there is an additional level of capability that the dealers have and that's a, a unique benefit to our customers that are out there because they can take a look at that information prior to maybe dispatching a truck and when they arrive right they have a better understanding of what they're there to tackle and uh, and that also even helps them prepare as maybe throwing a couple of the key parts on the truck before they leave and that way we have a better opportunity at a fix right first time Thank you, Ted. Uh, we've got a number of additional questions here coming in. I'm going to take a, a short commercial break here, though, to let you know about the next episode of Case Live. We will be coming to you just about a month from now, December 15th uh, at 10 a.m. in the morning to talk to you about used equipment. A uh, little bit of a different Case Live. I'm very excited uh, for this one and excited to talk about uh, the different considerations and advantages that used, uh, used equipment can provide your fleet. I'm going to drop the link to register for that uh, in the chat box right now. And then one more carrot. It's also product announcement day. Uh, stick around here and at the end of the Q&A, uh, we're going to show you the first look at a couple of cool new products from Case. Uh, Ted, question that came in here um, uh, from Scott. Scott, thank you for the question. Uh, could you please review the different types of available snow removal attachments, blades, blowers, etc.? Thank you. Yeah, so we offer a variety of different attachments for the machines depending on what type of, of snow removal business that you may be in. Between brooms, between um, angle yeah, push blades themselves, we also have sectional uh, box scraper blades as well. So there's a variety of different things that are out there that are going to allow you to assess and understand, hey, maybe this is a good attachment because I do a lot of sidewalks. Right? Or if you're doing a lot of parking lots, obviously a large sectional push is going to be the most productive you know, approach for you. So um, if you go out to our website, we have an attachment section that's out there with a variety of information on what we offered today. Thank you, Ted. Um, we have uh, a question here uh, related to a, a starting issue, but maybe a little different than the, um, than the electrical issue we were talking about. Uh, I, I've got a machine uh, that uh, it, it appears to freeze and won't actually move at startup. What, is, what does that sound like? Yeah, so there's, there's a few opportunities that, that come along with that. But one of the things, especially if it's, if it's um, you know, talking about a skid steer as an example, chain cases are an area that's often overlooked and chain cases are not filled completely full of oil. So that means that they can condensate, right? That condensation between heating and cooling or freezing and thawing can create moisture. It mixes with that oil. And if the concentration of moisture is high enough, it can actually freeze the oil solid in the bottom, locking up the drive chain. So if you have that concern, you can hear the engine lugging, the machine is trying to move. Don't force it. It's trying to tell you that there's something else going on. So heating up chain cases, as an example, really helps, um, you know, in that situation from a troubleshooting standpoint to see, hey, is that what's going on? You can physically pull, you know, the check plug as well. If you start to see like a milky substance in the oil, it's probably because the chain cases have been overlooked uh, for some period of time. So that's normally where I would start. 
you guys talked about it a little bit earlier when you were talking about uh, packing inside the tracks. Um, a question here about can my tires or tracks actually freeze? Yeah, actually they can. Um, and, and so we hit a little bit about tracks and packing and material, but a couple other considerations that you want to make, right? Inside of the wheels on a skid steer, right? If that is packed full of snow and that, in, that, that starts to kind of melt down and then refreeze around axle shafts and things like that, it can create some challenges. The other consideration as well is where you park your machines. Believe it or not, there have been a lot of opportunities that I've actually been a part of, as I've learned. Um, you know, when you go to park that machine, especially if you're going to have a thaw than a refreeze, you want to make sure that your machines are not in a low spot. There is nothing worse than showing up to the job site after a really cold morning to find that you've got an inch of water over the tops of the buckets or maybe over the top of the tracks on something and it is frozen solid to the ground. So these are all considerations that need to be made. Sometimes uh, just simple two by four planks, if you can put a machine up on planks, is a, uh, a cheap way to have a little additional insurance to prevent that situation. Question here, uh, gentleman has come in about jump starting your equipment uh, during cold weather. Um, what tips or tricks would you give? I've occasionally tried to jump start a machine, and depending on the type of machine that's doing the jump starting, it does or does not work. Any general tips or recommendations as it relates to jump starting machines in cold weather? Yeah. Sure, go ahead. Oh, one thing you want to make sure is that if your battery is completely discharged, a jump starting might not work immediately. Uh, it's oftentimes you'll need to remove that battery and hook it up to a benchtop charger and allow it to charge for a long period of time in order to reinstate that battery. So making sure that you don't have a completely discharged battery before jump starting is very important because oftentimes it will not work. Yeah, and one thing I would also add as well is before you go to jump start something, if you already knew that you had kind of a uh, a battery that hasn't had a, a wonderful life, right? Maybe it's been abused a bit. Uh, consider looking at the battery, look for swelling in the case because a, a discharged battery with less electrolysis happening has a higher probability of freezing. When you go to throw a bunch of amperage at that battery and you're trying to boost it and get it going, the issue is, is with the material that's frozen in there, the battery can sulfate and create, you know, a gas it's very bad for the battery. It's obviously bad, bad everywhere else. So if you have a frozen battery, the best way to do it is to pull the battery out, put it in a truck or indoors or something like that, unthaw it. And then what I would also do is uh, put it on a trickle charge or something like that to bring a little life back into it. Excellent answer, gentlemen. Thank you very much. Uh, another question here. Um, are there planned maintenance plans offered by case and case dealers? And I think what they're getting at is extended beyond the normal warranty or, or even pro care on our heavy equipment. Yeah, so I'll take that one. Um, absolutely, we do. Pro care is something that is a standard package that we do on our heavier machines, but our case dealers have the capability to put together customized packages that are unique to your operation. Uh, and that way you have a customized approach that fits the needs that you truly have based on the types of jobs and work that you do. Just reach out to your case dealer, kind of make sure that they understand exactly what it is that you do, and they'll be able to give you some quotes on that. Thank you, Ted. Thank you, Josh. Appreciate your time this morning. Thank you all for joining us uh, from home or the office or the shop, wherever you are here today. Uh, again, I'll remind you, our very next Case Live will be Case Live Used, uh, which will be happening on December 15th at 10 a.m. The link to that is down in the chat box now. And we're going to play you out here. I, I teased a little bit that it's, it's, it's product launch day. We don't always, other than when we do the big ones like the 620 and the, and the wheel loaders, where we have a separate event, we don't always get to do case lives on product launch day. Uh, we're going to play you out here with the introduction uh, of our brand new SV215E and SV217E uh, single drum vibratory soil, compactor, soil compactors. And uh, uh, we'll play that now. I'll drop the link in the chat box here and uh, thank you again as always and we look forward to seeing you on the next episode of Case Live. Thanks everybody. Hi, I'm Jeremy Dulac, product manager for Compaction Equipment at Case. And I'm here with one of two new additions to our soil compaction lineup, the SV215E. The SV215E is a new 154 horsepower roller that weighs in at about 33,000 pounds. And the new SV217E is 154 horses and weighs in at about 36,000 pounds. Available as either smooth drum 
or Padfoot, each machine retains the extreme performance benefits that we first introduced on our E-Series models last year. The first is that extreme gradeability. E-Series compactors feature a low center of gravity as well as an axle-free design that provides constant power to the wheels and drum with an electronic, self-adjusting torque control system. This is further assisted by the automatic traction control with HX Drive propulsion system. Optional on smooth drums and standard on padfoot models. This allows for an excellent performance on grades up to 67%. That's an industry best. Next is that pure power need for compacting a variety of soils. Standard dual amplitudes and frequencies match up with centrifugal forces of almost 75,000 pounds. This lets you really dial in a machine performance based on the size of lift and the type of materials. And then you have the consistency of the compaction, and that's made possible by the oscillating articulated roller joint that maintains consistent drum to ground contact. We also have an updated drum design that reduces drift and maintains constant compaction throughout each rotation. All of these combine together to allow you to compact each lift faster with fewer passes, increasing your productivity and efficiency and ultimately increasing the profitability of your compaction equipment over time. Also available as an option in all case soil compactors are various levels of intelligent compaction technology that will further help you dial in compaction performance, provide proof of compaction quality, and provide overall greater productivity and efficiency. Stepping up into the operator station, each machine is available in both cab and open ROPS configuration. It's a spacious, comfortable operator environment and the seat swivel is 80 degrees to give the operator excellent visibility down to the work area. You've also got excellent rear visibility with a low sloped rear hood. Another standout feature of each machine is the LED display integrated into the steering wheel. This puts all of the critical machine information right in front of the operator, minimizes distraction, and helps improve visibility by not having another dashboard on the machine. We've also got Case Hallmark ground line serviceability with easy access to all fluid ports, drains, checkpoints, and filters. And the cab can be easily tilted forward for excellent access to the primary hydraulic components of the machine. For more information on the all new SV215E and the SV217E single drum compactors, contact your local Case dealer or visit casece.com.